Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My goodness, you are a resilient group. <laughs> All we've been through, and here you are at church this morning. Well done, church family. Please be seated. Today on this Worldwide Communion Sunday, we join with millions of Christians around the world who are worshiping by celebrating communion. Some worship in great cathedrals, other wor others worship in churches like ours, and still others are meeting in secret today. Today, despite different languages, different ethnicities, different customs and traditions, and different continents, as Christians, we are united. We are united in our common faith in Jesus Christ, and we are united as we worship the same God and share in receiving communion. It's appropriate that we are worshiping without power today, because today, like so many Sundays, countless Christians around the world worship without electricity. But a lack of electricity will not stop us from something else we are celebrating today. You will notice we have our new piano. And we'll just say that it's a perk for coming to church after the storm. But I enjoy hearing it today, especially as our music director, Jacqueline, makes it sick. Hey, you'll notice that uh, even though Paula is here in the sanctuary, I'm here in the pulpit myself. On Monday, she was at the ER because of sudden problems with vision in her right eye. It turns out she had a tear in her retina, so they did emergency laser surgery to hopefully repair the tear and prevent the retina from detaching. She's to take it easy, and you can imagine how difficult that is for me, and let the eye heal. Her vision is still blurry, so she's taking a break today but she is very much right here. <laughs> Let us pray. Our loving and heavenly Father, thank you for being our rock and our salvation. In a world where things are constantly changing, where nothing seems secure, we give thanks that as our rock and as our salvation, your promises are sure. Your presence is a constant reality, and we can always trust in you. We also give you thanks this day for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we join <clears throat> with millions of them around the world as we unite in communion on this Worldwide Communion Sunday. Dear Lord, with all that has happened this past week, some are weary and struggling. Others are afraid and confused. Still others are grieving and sad. Lord God, through the words and music and prayers and message, please reach out to your people here today and for all those who have joined us online. Help us, strengthen us, comfort us, and love us as only you can. And bless us as we pray using those words Jesus taught his disciples, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And our opening praise is number 528. You will turn in our hymn books to 528 and we'll sing Jesus Calls Us Here to Me. Yeah. 
Sunday, we pause to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. Please strengthen them, encourage them, provide for them, protect them, and bless them. Dear Lord, it's so easy to become focused on ourselves and on our concerns and needs. And sometimes we lose sight of how blessed we are and how much we have to be thankful for. Help us, Lord, to truly appreciate each day. Help us to see it as a priceless gift from you and help us to live it to the full. As we prepare to celebrate the Sacrament of Communion this morning, we pray and ask you to prepare our hearts and our minds. Forgive our sins. Cleanse us from wrong thoughts, words, and actions. And today, may all Christians around the world who are celebrating communion see you, so that in the brilliance of your love for us, we will walk in the light of your righteousness, forgiveness, and hope. For these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. You are not alone. You are part of a remarkable church family, both here and around the world. And part of membership as a Christian means that Jesus knows you individually and has a plan and love that is meant uniquely for you and you alone. All thanks and praise be to God for this but one of his many marvelous gifts. Amen. For a response of reading, I invite you to turn in your Blue Pew Bibles to page 510, and we are reading Psalm 37, verses 1 through 9. Please stand. Psalm 37. <clears throat> do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He, he will make your vindication shine like the light, light, and the justice of your cause like the new day. day. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret that it is only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Amen. Amen. And let's sing together. Seek ye first that you'll find on page 625 in your hymn books. 625.
<laughs> uh, the funeral for Dennis Friesen will take place this Thursday at 10 a.m. And our ongoing care and love to Rosella, Laura Lee, and all the family. And there are some beautiful flowers here this morning. And these are in fond and loving memory of Elmer Painter, who passed away 25 years ago today. And 25 years ago, his funeral was held on Worldwide Communion Sunday. A fitting tribute for someone who had served as an elder for 37 years. And these are lovingly given by Doris, Audrey, and Dick. Thank you. As we give thanks to God for his blessings and ask his blessing on this word, let's pray together. Generous God, we give you thanks this day for your love. Every good thing we have comes from you, and with thankfulness, we offer a portion of it back to you this day. Please bless the gifts we bring and use them in us for the building up of your kingdom. And Lord, as we prepare to hear your word read and proclaimed, help us to set aside our worries and concerns and distractions so that we will focus on what you want us to hear and learn this day and receive your love and have our faith to grow. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It would be an understatement to say that this week has not been easy. Whether you sustain damage to your property or not, we've all been impacted by the storm and its aftermath. The terror of the storm itself, the days-long power outages that changed landscape, Familiar places, now anything but familiar. Our sense of security is lost. Storms of this magnitude don't happen here, at least not in most people's memory. Our grief is real. Our stress and fear and worry are real. The people who have lost their homes and their businesses and their livelihoods are real. We all need to take a collective deep breath and be kind to ourselves and to each other. We've been through three long, hard years of COVID and now have experienced a traumatic event. You may feel weary, overwhelmed, and at wit's end, unable to concentrate. You may feel angry, depressed, or afraid. It's all normal as we navigate the extreme emotions that accompany and follow an extreme event. But as a church family, we have two things that others do not. We have God, and we have each other. As we said last week, God is our refuge and strength. And that whenever we face, He has promised that He will never leave us or forsake us. He is with us in all the storms of life. And we have each other to lean on and to help each other. And that's part of what we celebrate today as we observe Worldwide Communion Sunday, that we are not alone. God is with us. And we are part of something much bigger than ourselves. We are part of the Worldwide Christian Church. All over the world, other Christians are praying for us just as we pray for them. We may never meet, we may never know for certain their needs or struggles, but God does. And so we lift them up in prayer just as they pray for us and for our needs. It's humbling to think that today, even at this moment, Christians around the world are praying for us praying for our needs, especially when you consider some of their needs today. As Canadian Presbyterians, we belong to the World Alliance of Reformed Churches. The World Alliance of Reformed Churches represents more than 230 denominations in 108 countries with an estimated membership of 80 million people. Wow. 
One of those denominations is the Reformed Church in Transcarpathia. That's not a word that we use every day. That may not sound familiar, but their location is described using another name that is very familiar, Ukraine. <coughs> These Reformed brothers and sisters in Christ number around 70,000 members in 108 churches in Ukraine. <clears throat> and today, like us, they are each celebrating communion. Their Christian actions, though, are not limited to worship. Each Sunday after the service finishes, their other work begins. Most of us have been without power this week and still without power. As frustrating as our experience has been, imagine what it would be like for not just weeks, but months, to be without power. And being without power for months is what the Reformed Christians in Ukraine are used to, and in the midst of it, they have stepped up to help. Many of the churches have their own bakeries run by generators in the church. And after their Sunday service, they deliver bread. Last year, one church alone provided 45,000 loaves of bread for members of their church and their community. Over the past week, we've been cooking with barbecues. Most people in Ukraine don't have barbecues, and even if they did, there's no propane to run them. So throughout the week, the Reformed Christians in Ukraine distribute firewood so people can have a way of cooking a few hot meals a week. This week, we haven't been able to wash our clothes, in Ukraine, many people are wearing torn and worn out clothes. So the Reformed Christians in Ukraine operate centers out of their churches to repurpose used clothing. Paula told me this past week, the Charlottetown firefighters have responded to over 200 calls for assistance. Imagine what would happen in our community if there was no fire department. Pastor Miklos Zuzkovsky is the local minister of the Reformed Christian Church. Recognizing the need for fire protection, he organized a fire department and staffed it with members of his church and volunteers in the community. Thanks to those Reformed Christians in Ukraine, a community of 12,000 people now has a fire department. In Canada, we do not have military conscription. In Ukraine, to fight against the Russian invasion, Ukrainian men have been conscripted into the military. Consider what it would be like for your family if you were told that your father, or your husband, or your brother, who is now in the military, would not be able to provide for your family. In the Canadian Armed Forces, family members of soldiers are supported by the, members, by the Military Family Resource Center and countless other support networks. In Ukraine, those support networks do not exist, so Reformed churches in Ukraine are providing military families with food, health, and care. And as they celebrate communion today, what is their attitude? According to those who have visited those churches, the Reformed Christians are overwhelmingly joyful, humble, Grateful for what they have, they count their blessings and avidly pray for the Christian church around the world, asking themselves how they can give to others who have less than them. They live out the words that describe the first Christian church in Acts chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 42. And I invite you to turn to it now in your blue pew Bibles. It's found on page 120 in your New Testament section. Acts chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 42. Page 120. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 42, page 120. And speaking of the early Christian church, 
we read, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Day by day, as they spent much time together, they broke bread ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, and day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The scripture describes some pretty joy-filled Christians who are part of a growing Christian church. The Reformed churches in Ukraine repeatedly describe themselves as blessed, and not surprisingly, they are a growing denomination. Their youth events attract 2,500 young people. Their family day regularly has 6,000 families attend. One European observer remarked, this part of Europe cannot be considered post-Christian. When asked to describe their faith, one of the elders declared, as confessing Christians, we have to confess our faith each day to the people who live around us. So I will repeat what I said a few minutes ago. It's humbling to think that today, even at this moment, Christians around the world are praying for us, praying for our needs, especially when you consider what their needs are today, particularly the needs of Reformed Christians in Ukraine. None of this is certainly to minimize what we have been through as a result of the hurricane, but to serve as a reminder that we are never alone in the midst of our struggles. We are so blessed to be able to have communion this morning. We are so blessed to be part of the World Alliance of Reformed Churches and the Universal Christian Church, and to be connected with brothers and sisters in Christ, like those in the Reformed Church in Transcarpathia. Now, none of us would ever want a hurricane like we experienced last weekend to be repeated. But if there is a silver lining, maybe it's that we have been given the opportunity, like the church in Transcarpathia, to work together in the aftermath of the storm. As Christians, as a church family, we can live out our faith by helping those around us, whether helping them clean up their yards offering to drop off a hot meal to those who don't have power, or letting people do a load of laundry or have a hot shower, or even something as simple as checking in with people to make sure that they're okay and to see if there's anything they need. Doing what islanders do best, caring for one another. And as we take communion together in a few minutes, we can give thanks that we are part of the worldwide community of faith as Christians, knowing that as we pray for strength and protection and blessings for the Christians in the Reformed Church in Ukraine, they are praying for us in our time of need. And we give thanks to God for the blessing of being able to worship together. And we pray that as we live and work together as a community of faith, Day by day, God will add to our number those who are being saved. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our loving and heavenly Father, we give thanks for your promise that you are always with us, especially in the midst of the storms we face in life. We thank you for all the ways we have witnessed our community come together in the aftermath of the hurricane. Please help us to continue to work together and draw strength from you as we lean on you and draw strength and encouragement from one another. 
Lord, our needs are many and varied, and so we lift up our church family this day. We pray especially today for Gordon McRae, who is in hospital in Summerside. May Gordon and Joanne feel your presence and draw strength and encouragement from the love and prayers of this, their church family. We also continue to pray for Gavin Rich Richardson and Ralph Sanderson and for all those who need to feel your love and strength. We pray for the needs of all those gathered here, for all those who are watching online, and pray that whether their need is in body, in mind, or in soul, that they will sense your loving touch and presence and draw strength from you. Lord, we pray also for our community and our province. We give thanks for the work crews working diligently to remove debris and, dis and restore power. Please keep them safe and grant us all patience as so many of us continue to wait for power to be restored. And as we prepare for communion, we pray for the church around the world, and especially for our sisters and brothers in the Reformed Church of Ukraine. Protect and deliver them from the evil that is coming against them, and bless them for their continued witness to their communities as they live out their faith each and every day. And we pray that each one of us will continue to do the same. And all these prayers we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we prepare for communion today, John is going to bless us with some very special music. <laughs>
Jacqueline has so beautifully reminded us that even though we are but one small voice, we join with multiple voices around the globe this day to say how great thou art. Thank you. As we prepare for communion, I invite you to turn in the front or back cover of your hymn books. And please stand as we join with Christians who have proclaimed their faith in Jesus over centuries by repeating together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. to the Lord's table, we hear these words of invitation. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me will never be hungry, and those who believe in me will never be thirsty. No one who comes to me will I ever turn away. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to this table. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all those who trust in him to share in the feast that he has prepared. Oh, taste and see, God is good. You are invited to come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because the Lord loves you and gave himself for you. Let this bread and this cup be for you, the token and pledge of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, all meant for you if you will receive them in humble faith. Let us pray. Our loving and heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, with joy we give you thanks and praise. <clears throat> Almighty God, you commanded light to shine out of darkness. You divided the sea and dry land. You created the vast universe and called it good. You made us in your image to live with one another in love. You gave us the breath of life and freedom to choose your way. You set forth your purpose and commandments through Moses. Through the words of your prophets, you gave your people hope by promising them a redeemer. And now we rejoice that your son, Jesus Christ, the Savior, has come and will come again in power and glory, making all things new. How wonderful are your ways, O Holy One, for you and you alone are God. Therefore, with apostles and prophets 
and that great cloud of witnesses who live for you beyond all time and space, we lift our hearts in joyful praise to say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks, Lord God, that you sent Jesus to live among us, full of grace and truth, sharing our joy and sorrow. Jesus healed the sick and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, Jesus took up his cross and died that we might live. We praise you that he overcame death and is risen to rule the world. He is still the friend of sinners and we trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us, and believe that when he comes in glory, we will celebrate victory with him. Therefore, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we take this bread and this cup and give you praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, we pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and fruit of the vine, that we and all who share this feast may be one with Christ and he with us. And here we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, and pray that in your mercy you will accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and fill us with the hope and the assurance of eternal life, that we may be your faithful people until we feast with you in the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. <coughs> Drink this cup in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins, and be thankful. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. 
And these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Help us now to go into the world in the strength of your spirit as ambassadors of the gospel. And all this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please turn in your books of praise to 461 as we close our service with singing, Be Thou My Vision, 461. in Taiwan, and what a blessing to belong to the Worldwide Christian Church that Joni and Mingxia and their family are part of the church family at St. Mark's, and what a beloved part of our church family you are. Welcome home, Mingxia and Joni. Thank you. 